Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. Time now to shine a light on baseball. Baseball winning 12 of their first 16 with right-handed pitcher Noah Song. Take me back to Kinston, North Carolina. I played high school baseball. Most guys I ever struck out in a game was five. You had such a role going on. Do you even realize that you're in a groove like that as you're doing it, or is it just a centralized focus on each batter as you're going along, especially as early in the season as this was for you guys against Air Force? Um, well, yeah, definitely, like you said, especially early in the season, I was really just trying to focus pitch to pitch, um, especially starting off in the game. Uh, you know, I mean, I didn't know what the what the number was for the strikeouts at any point in the game, really, until afterwards when they told me. But, uh, I mean, it was really... I, you know, depending on what count it was, if it was 1-0, I knew I had to make my, you know, make my pitch, get back to 1-1. If it was 0-1, I was trying to get to 0-2. So I was always pushing for the next strike. Um, and then eventually when it got to 0-2, I was just trying to sit people down. So uh, just trying to collect outs that way, but uh, also trying to work as efficiently as possible. So As a pitcher, they want you to get a first pitch strike every time. How hard is it, though, when you don't get that first pitch for a strike to maintain focus, not get frustrated because you know how important every pitch can be during the course of a game. Um, it can be difficult at times, but uh, again, it's also about knowing your enemy. Um, if you know you have aggressive hitters in the box, obviously, you know you can still uh, you don't have to necessarily you know serve anything up or feed it over the plate. Um, if guys are willing to expand a little bit, you can still get outs that way, miss hits and balls like that. But um, I mean, overall, uh, you know. You just got to try to work back in the count as best possible. Early in the season, you're you're the number one guy in the rotation. Early in the season like that, there's not a whole lot of video out there yet on, on a lot of teams. What's your approach? Is it more about you just trying to work on the things you do, the best pitches that you throw, and obviously depending on the count, make adjustments th that you have to make? Or, or how much can, information can you find out about the teams you're playing, especially early in the season when there's not a whole lot going on? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Coach Applegate gives us uh, our scouting reports every week, but um, you know, something that he always preaches is uh, we're still going to pitch to our strengths no matter what. Uh, we're not going to, you know, obviously different hitters uh, have different holes in their swings and things like that, but overall, we're still going to pitch to our strengths. We're going to pitch the way that we know how to pitch. Every pitcher is different. You know, um, if, if one of my pitches isn't working a certain day, then I'm going to have to adjust and try to go to some some other pitch that day and have that work for me. Um, but overall, yeah, it's uh, it's more about pitching to what I know I can get out to it as opposed to trying to make a, a hitter miss hit every single time in that way. What's been the reason why you've had, you know, a reasonable amount of, of quality success here in, in your career at Navy pretty much from the time uh, you hit the ground running here? What's been the reason why? Uh, I definitely got to give uh, a lot of the credit um, to Luke Gillingham, actually. Uh, when I was a freshman, you know, he kind of uh, raised me um, as a pitcher, uh, physically and mentally, but Really, really a, a big portion of it was the mental game. He, uh, he introduced me to college level baseball on the mental side. He taught me how to take everything pitch by pitch. Um, I had a lot of conversations with him, whether it was in the dugout or in the locker room, anywhere that I could really. And um, overall, just, you know, I mean, he, he really was the guy that uh, helped me take my game to the next level. So. Big adjustment being here on the East Coast? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're already seeing it right now. The weather uh, doesn't always cooperate, but. You know, you got to do your best with what you have. So, no doubt about that. Look, I mean, you know, you you've had success. Your team has had success. There's an expectation uh, w within your locker room every day about the way you all do your business. But a game like yesterday against Ryder, when you all come from behind like that, how much does that help keep things going and and keep that good mojo going and and get guys to come to practice now uh, this week to get ready for obviously you know you've got Patriot Leagues. Uh, starting uh, this weekend, but how much does a win like that keep that momentum going and keep that enthusiasm to come back and do more work going? Oh, absolutely. Uh, especially, you know, winning the last game uh, on the weekend, that's that's a huge deal, especially on a walk-off, things like that, because it carries the energy throughout the whole week for practice. Um, you know, everybody's in a great mood. Everybody wants to practice harder, and it just helps you prepare for that next weekend going forward. Um, and it's also nice having the, you know, the three single games because we can kind of take it day by day. We don't have to you know, refocus in between games, so it's mm -hmm. kind of nice of that in that sense. But um, uh, you know, even for the upcoming doubleheader this weekend after uh, after our Thursday game, we're still. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just about uh, you know go going away, going on the road is always tough, but the preparation beforehand, it's good to have everybody have a lot of high energy going into that week. As you guys approach the Patriot League schedule, does that 
does it ratchet up even more? Can you feel an even more a different intensity, a higher intensity as you know league play is, is right around the corner now? Uh, yeah, everybody's aware. Um, you know, these games, obviously, they matter a lot. Um, I don't think anybody necessarily changes the way they prepare, though. Uh, everybody, uh, you know, still has their game plan going forward, whether it's whether you're a pitcher or a position player, anything that you got. But um, everybody's preparation pretty much stays the same. Uh, I think it's not really until game time that people, you know, still really start to feel the environment of Patriot League play. Who's been instrumental in, in helping you get to where you've gotten, even before you got here, uh, to the Naval Academy? Um, I mean, my parents really have been a, a, a supporting factor throughout everything that I've done. And I know a lot of people say their parents support them, but uh, I mean, I, I really feel like they've, they've given me a lot of help. Uh, they've always been behind me, always, always stood behind what I've, what I've uh, you know, wanted to do. And also, uh, my travel ball team, you know, uh, my pitching coach there, he was really supportive. Uh, he really cared about, you know, me as a person uh, as opposed to just a baseball player, which is something that I think Coach Applegate does really well here too. I was going to say, that's something that probably gets lost on the amateur level like that uh, a lot. I mean, I think people get, we see it in all the different amateur sports. Everybody gets caught up in, in wins and losses and stuff like that. And I think we've seen, especially with pitchers through the years, we've seen a lot of pitchers at young ages uh, end up with, arm issues and stuff like that because at that level uh, they do get pitched too much especially if you're good yeah you know I mean you, you know what that's like I mean yeah. everybody wants hey let's throw no in the game let's put no in the game but how, how do how are you able to avoid that keep that arm in shape and, and then obviously make the adjustment here to the college level as you mentioned Luke helping you out here and and, and obviously been able to continue that uh, rise of success yeah you know obviously it starts with the strength and conditioning program uh, arm arm care program uh, coach Applegate's really big on all that but um you know there's also there's also the the mental fortitude that it takes um, as opposed to you can pitch injured or you can pitch through a little bit of uncom uncomfortability um, and you guys you just kind of have to know the difference between that and find the line between that uh, especially on cold days you're going to be uncomfortable a lot of times your arm might not feel 100 percent but you're really going to have to work through that um, and that i think in the long run you know you get a few innings under your belt you know especially at an earlier age it kind of helps your arm condition to that um, and then you don't really uh doesn't really bother you as much later on I'm sure when some of the young pitchers, you know, ask you questions, you've got advice for them. But is the best way to lead in every weekend being that number one guy and, and going out there and, and try to do that work and set that example for everybody else? Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, like you talked about the energy going into the weeks, uh, you know, game one is definitely something that sets the tone for the rest of the weekend, um, whether it's a three-game series or a four-game series. Uh, it's something that, you know, if you have a good start that day, every every pitcher after you kind of feels like, you know, I want to I want to match that or, or exceed that, and it's just that that friendly competition that, uh, among the team that kind of really uh, pushes everybody to do a little bit better than the last guy, which is great. Favorite major league pitcher, Max Scherzer, without a doubt. Really, absolutely amazing. See, a California guy, you know, pitch Max Scherzer. <laughs> you got a number of different guys. What is it about him uh, that you like the most? Because I, I love the guy. I mean, he's a bulldog competitor, and absolutely. you won't find anybody that competes harder. But what is it about him uh, that, that you like about him? Uh, you said it, Bulldog. Uh, I mean, in, super intense guy. Um, I'm going to be honest, I like his two different colored eyes. I think that just makes <laughs> it, uh, just adds to the game. Adds, you could get some contacts like that, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you ever need him at some point. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, no, just really his intensity, the way he approaches the game. Um, he doesn't really uh, allow himself to be okay with failures. Um, I, I've, I've got to watch a couple of his bullpens and just the amount of intensity for every single pitch, whether it's in a game, whether it's in a bullpen playing catch he always has a purpose with everything that he does which i think is a great example to younger kids what does it mean to the program to be able to play in places like oriole park and, and fenway park this year it's awesome it's great for the program uh i mean i think it gives the guys a lot more to look forward to in the season a lot more to uh you know i mean play for i guess uh in the sense of they feel a little more energized throughout the season to keep them going uh get their mind off the fact that you know they got to be here for spring break so looking forward to the round round competition against everybody so you get a shot at everybody twice uh, yeah absolutely I think uh, I think that'll be great I think it uh, kind of uh, allows each team to kind of reset and like you know put their best on the field every single time and it'll be a grind all right appreciate the time best of luck uh, as the season goes on thank you all right Noah Song joining us here the mids are 12 and 4 and of course Patriot League's right around the corner and as always to find their schedule you can go to www.navysports.com